was great. Oh, I'm so <laughs> sad. <laughs> We just got warmed up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, well, like, um, my gosh, I wanted to um, go more in the direction of, of talking about um, how racism has probably affected learning. But I like the podcast that you have. Uh, Michael, he has a podcast with your uh, uh, colleague. His name is Dr. Don Spencer. Don Spencer. Okay. So I, okay. Yeah, so they talk about the type of jobs and careers you can get in STEM. That's the one that I watched from last month. And I was really okay. intrigued that you guys really broke down, okay, this is how much money you can make as a mechanical engineer. And then this is the, these are the courses that you need to take. And I'm just sitting here like, if we had this kind of information back when I was going to school, then maybe. Because I'm finding that a lot of creatives are engineers. I interviewed someone uh, literally a couple of days ago. He's a he's an engineer. He studied at Virginia Tech and decided, you know what? I don't like how we do things as an engineer, and I want to switch it around and become a life coach. I want to use engineering to help people engineer their life. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, that's different. But yeah, so it could be that, a, and he and he tutors um, children, so. I don't know. It just seems uh, we we. I don't know why I was so intimidated by math when I was a kid or when I was in college, when I was in high school. And I know a lot of other uh, students feel the same kind of weird. I was one. You was one. I was one. Yeah. So so so, Doctor Jones, uh, I was excelling in, in high school in just about every area, uh, mm -hmm. but for some reason, mathematics was uh, my Achilles heel. And uh, to their credit, when I went in, into high school from eighth grade, uh, many, many, many years ago, uh, when that, that happened, <laughs> um, I was placed in an algebra honors class with the dean of students there. Mm -hmm. I struggled. Uh, I had to have lunch with him the whole year to get through that class. It's just like, and he was gracious enough to do that. It's like, I know you're having problems. Like, oh, I'm having major problems. Uh, every honors class, fine, except for math. Something about math, and I don't know what it was. Maybe, hopefully, he did skip my generation, and and my kids would much, be much better <laughs> with math. But it it it, it missed me. It, it missed me, Doctor Jones. I wish it hadn't, but it missed yeah. me. But I, I worked through it. I worked through it as much as I possibly could. Um, <laughs> it, it, and and I think that, on the other hand, some generations it hits. And as you said, the parents don't, they, they're they thinking, I know it's good at math, so of course my child won't be. And they, they, they have the ability, they have the aptitude, and we mm -hmm. don't tap into it. We miss out mm -hmm. on that, uh, which which is to our, our detriment. Um, I, can, those, those are, those are uh, the young people that could become teachers as well. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, absolutely. They understand it, they'll, they'll be able to, they, and you know what? Sometimes they are in the classroom. They're talking to their peers. They're the mm -hmm. ones that are helping their friends, their friends that don't want to go to, you know, quote unquote, tutoring. They're helping them like, how did, how did you do number 13? How, what did you do there? And they're helping them informally uh, get through. Um, but I, I wanted to ask uh, about what you mentioned in the podcast. Are we free to use information from that podcast? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, she mentioned that because I think that that is something that will hopefully maybe if not speak to the students, it may speak to the parents. And begin to have them encourage their their uh, students to look into it. Like, what happens? You know, when you get out of school, what does a mechanical engineer do? Uh, you know, what kind of income do they take in? How can they set up stability for a family, their next generation? Uh, civil engineering. Uh, some right. of these things that I I think, as you said, I think when we hear engineering, we have a very limited idea of what that means. Um, and and a lot of um, in the community, we have a lot of uncles, aunts that have construction businesses. They, mm -hmm. so that's civil engineering. So they've been exposed to it, and some of them bring their nephews to help out, nieces to help out with their business. They are exposing them to civil engineering, but never have the conversation about mm -hmm. this. And so it is that it is that we only graduate. I didn't share this, but. Um, we've gone down. We were uh, at graduating 5% of all engineers 
in this country that graduated were African American, right? And now it's dropped over the last few years to 4%. Mm. Going in the wrong direction. Mm, mm -hmm. and, and the National Society of Black Engineers is trying to really work at doubling our engineers that are graduating because we they see the challenge um, and you know the, the lack of preparation sometimes. And, is, and, that, and, is that what it is? That people like are getting, going into uh, Villanova and they're just not equipped? Yeah, they find out that their math isn't the same math at every school. For example, you might have calculus at one high school and you went through five chapters, whereas at another high school, they went through 10 or 12 chapters, but they're still calling both of them calculus. Um, you have one student that's come in and take calculus and one student that's come, is taking AP calculus. So you're sitting in a class in college with 90% of the students have had AP calculus and you've had pre-calculus or calculus. Now, do we need to nationalize? Uh, I, so I, I work with uh, speech and extent, and one of the questions that has come up within the last week because of politics, and I'll leave all of that out uh, of, of asking you this question, but it, it, the simple question is this, uh, to, pro, to uh, improve education in our country, do we need to make changes on the local level or the national level. And from what you're saying to me, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like there need to be some national standards set so that if a student goes uh, goes into Villanova or University of Texas or Cal Berkeley, they go there and we see on a transcript that they have had AP calculus we know what that means. There can't be ambiguity that, oh, if they went to the high school in Massachusetts, that's different than in California. And if they went to this high school, it means a completely different thing than if they went to a city public high school in Trenton. So, so how about this? They had national standards and no one really applied them. Oh, are you kidding me? To the same standard across the United States. That's the other issue. It's like, who, if you give the standard, you also um, need the states to say, we're going to fund the activity to make those standards happen. You know, different states are applying it in different ways, even though they claim that there's accountability. You can tell <laughs> what, that, what kind of accountability is going on if everybody's different. So, and you also have a student that end up in private school. So they're getting a certain kind of education that other students are not getting as well yeah, and that was kind of the stigma uh, growing up if you went to a public high school in Chicago um, mm -hmm. your education was subpar if you versus someone that went to a Catholic high school and what ended up happening with me with math I took um, AP math as an eighth grader and I understood math up into trigonometry then I hit a brick wall I don't know what happened. I got to college. I was taking finite math. Mike, did we? Did you take finite math at North Central? Oh no, <laughs> no. I was. I was. I'm. I'm telling you the, the God honest truth. When it came to math, I took a course called World of Math. Uh, oh wow! Addition, <laughs> subtraction, multiplication, and division. And I was happy that it was available to me. Uh, yeah. No. I. Yeah. You hit a brick wall. I smashed like a cartoon character into that brick wall like Bugs Bunny or something. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know what? And, and two, uh, um, I have a, a six-year-old. She loves math. All I do is encourage her there. Uh, uh, she does not hear about like, it was hard for daddy. No, 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 no. Here, here's two things. First tech challenge. Um, you should find out about that for her. And okay, tech challenge? First tech challenge. First tech challenge. Okay. Also, there's um, these. They're they come in boxes. They're called little bits. Um, they're they're little robots that you connect. They have coding. They connect in coding, and you can build all kinds of things with it. They're called little bits, um, and. So the first tech challenge is a competition that happens at schools, um, but also now I'm thinking about first Lego league, first Lego. Oh yeah, 
competition with Legos. But, you know, when we were growing up, you just put the Legos together, build the house, knock it down, right? Right. Now they have Legos that elect have electronics in it. So they can move like a robot. They can right. they can take solar, they have solar panels. They mm -hmm. have, you can program them. It's a whole nother, they actually have, I think it's in Disneyland, a Lego, Lego um, country or something that you can go visit. But anyway, Lego, first Lego League, is the start of robotics and getting them engaged and fun. You can buy these kits for your home. Um, another one is uh, STEM Finity. STEM Finity, okay. Finity. You just go to their website. They have hundreds of games and robots and things to create. Because I think that's what you really want to do. With her love of math, is get her up, get her to apply it to various types of things. Um, you know, in, in the kitchen, it's measuring things. You know, if, you, if you're making uh, you know, any kind of item, a cake, or you, you have to me use measuring cups. So for a child, mm -hmm. please see what that looks like. Nice. And what does 12 inches look like? What is, so they get to see it. And that gives them a better cue. When Even when they're sitting down to do a math problem, they'll say, well, that can't be possible because 15 inches looks like this. Mm, mm -hmm. I already have that. It's about concepts. So I believe connecting creativity with um, math and just solving that is actually brightens your mind to go, this can be done. If I can see that, because I'm a visual person, I think I can speak mm -hmm. to Michael also that we're both visual people. So if we can see what if something I engineer put together and I can see it of course I'm going to okay whatever kind of problems or things that I have to figure out I'll figure it out because I used to love Ooh. making cakes I used to love making buttermilk buttermilk biscuits that's what it was oh. buttermilk biscuits I used to make them from scratch my mother said I'm about to stop you from making this because we're both going to end up 300 pounds and won't be able to go <laughs> out, out the window like yeah we have to stop this right now I'm like yes because I measured it right the buttermilk the measured and I, I know how I know how to shift so I was very excited about being a baker that's a that's a skill that's still with me today but I'm just oh awesome myself, you have so, to come yeah. by and visit or you have to mail something yeah right <laughs> buttermilk biscuits I that's me <laughs>